Welcome back YouTube. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make an easy cutscene in Roblox. And this was actually requested by someone in a previous video. So if you want specific tutorials, just comment down below. What you're looking at right now is the end product. So that's what it's going to be like when we're all done. Let's get started. Alright, so to begin with, I'm going to be looking for a map. And this is just going to be for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go to models and I'm going to look for a map. And let's look for a good map. Okay, I'll use this one. And there's our map. So now I can delete the base plate and I've got my map here. So I'm going to pretend that this is the map for the game and we're going to be making a cutscene. All right. So basically what we're going to be doing is making our camera move around. So first, let's start out with finding an initial position for the camera to move around. What I'm going to be doing is, let's see, I want I'm going to start off right here. Move your camera around using the WASD keys and just look for a place where you want to begin your cutscene and then go to starter pack object local script now we're going to start coding so i'm going to be teaching you something called camera interpolation and that's basically making the camera go from one point like here all the way to here but doing it very smoothly so it's not instant it takes some time and that's the basis for how a cutscene is made in roblox so we are going to get the output open and what we need to do is we need to find where the camera is located so to do that we need to go to the command bar and type print workspace.currentcamera.cframe and this right here is the coordinate frame of the camera so this is basically where the camera is located in the world and if you notice if I move my camera and then I print it again the thing changed so that is basically where the camera is in the world and where it's facing so if I go here and I press enter I get these numbers and if the camera looks this way and I press it again you can see the numbers change. These three numbers are the same because this is the position and everything after those three numbers is the orientation or where the camera is looking. So if you look up and you stay the same position, the orientation here changes and this also changed a little bit because I moved. But as you can see, that's how that works. So I'm going to press enter and this is going to be my first value for the cutscene. So I'm going to go back to my script and get rid of this. I'm going to go local. Local C frame 0, we'll go C frame 1 equals C frame dot new, and I just paste it. And now our variable right here, C frame 1, is equal to whatever value of the camera that we had. So this position and orientation of the camera is going to be stored under C frame 1. So now that we have our C frame 1, we're going to need a C frame 2, which is basically where the camera is supposed to go after it goes here. So it starts off here, and let's say I want the camera to zoom in like this and then face right here. So I'm going to do the same thing, print the C-frame. Now this is the new C-frame. This is the C-frame of the camera if it's looking this way. So we're going to take that, copy it, and we're going to go enter, we're going to make another variable, C-frame2 equals C-frame.new and then paste it. So now we've got two C-frames which represent where the camera starts off and where the camera ends. Now we need to set up our custom camera. Since cutscenes use uh, camera manipulation, you need to set up a scriptable camera. So what you have to do is local cam equals workspace current camera. Cam dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot scriptable. And before I enter this, I'm gonna show you what the current camera looks like. So first let me find my spawn location and let's put it like right here. If you play, the camera by default set up such that you can rotate it and you can walk around with it. And the camera that I'm talking about is this one right here. This is the one that we're going to be changing. And if you look here, the camera type is set to custom, which is basically what Roblox calls this default camera. So you take the camera type, and what we're going to be doing is if you set it to scriptable, you'll notice if I begin walking, the camera stops following me. But if you change it to scriptable, then you can script it. That's why it's called scriptable. So we're going to stop the game and go to the local script. Now we're going to set it to scriptable. And now we're going to add a weight. Okay, so as you can see, under camera, scriptable. That means if I move, the camera will stop following me. But now the scripter has full control over the camera. And that's exactly what we need. First, we're going to do this without using camera interpolation. So it's going to just set the value and it's not gonna be smooth or anything. 
So let's go with wait three. We're gonna wait three seconds. Then we're gonna go camera dot C frame equals C frame one. We're gonna wait three seconds and set it to C frame two. All right. So now, after three seconds, the camera should be changed. So we'll wait three seconds. Boom. And then three seconds later, boom. So that's not a cutscene though. That's too instant. So that's what I mean when I say smoothly. So to not achieve this instantaneous effect, we have to use something called camera interpolation. So let's not do this. But what we should do is we should go camera.c frame equals c frame one. Because this is the first C frame. So the first frame that the camera goes to should be instantaneous. So the cutscene will start off like this. So as you can see, this is where the cutscene is going to start off. Now our camera has been put to that C frame one that we found out earlier. If you try to move the camera using your right click, it won't work. If you try to move your character, see my character is right there. It's so tiny, but it's not going to change anything. Now we can use camera interpolation. And to do that, we're going to be using something called tweening, tween service. So if you don't know what that is, I do have a video on it and I will link it. So it's probably in the top right corner. But let's start. So what we're going to be doing is local tween service. And now we're going to create the tween. What I'm doing here is we're creating the um, the interpolation, the thing that makes it go from C frame 1 to C frame 2 very smoothly. And to do that, we have to use tween service. So how this works is creating a tween. Tween is basically like an object for moving things smoothly and creating a tween the object is camera because that's what we're trying to tween and we need some information on the tween so the first thing is the duration so if i say three it's going to take three seconds to do the tween second thing is easing style enum.easing style dot and you can choose all of these cool things so i'm going to do cubic and enum.easing direction dot something we can do out so this is the information about the tween now here's the property table now in here, we're going to give everything that we're changing about the tween. So let's start with C frame equals, well, the camera started at C frame one, so we're gonna change it to C frame two. And that's basically it. So now we just play the tween. Now all of this will happen in a smooth fashion, hopefully, if there's no bugs. And there you go. Instead of doing it instantaneously, it did it really smoothly. And let's play around with these values to get a more cutscene feel. So for the duration, we can go local tween duration equals seven. And now instead of changing this number, we can make it a variable. So now it'll take seven seconds. So you'll notice it'll be a little bit longer. Now it's more of a cutscene. And you can change this. If you don't like cubic, you can make it sign change this to like in out I would stick with cubic and out because that's personally my favorite you're free to change it in however way you want yeah this makes it go yep that's the easing style all right so that's cool and all but that only does it for one single tween we want this to happen for a bunch of tweens because it's a cutscene so what we'll do is instead of using C frame 1, C frame 2, C frame 3, C frame 4, dot dot dot, we'll make it an array. So local C frame array equals. And now we can just copy and paste the C frames right inside of it. And now what we're doing here is we're making a list. So we're telling Roblox this is the list of positions that I want to tween the camera. For this one, we can just do C frame array 1. And that just means this C frame. And now, instead of C frame 2, we'd have to do C frame array 2. So, C frame array 2. Now, this will do the same thing, except it uses an array now. So, our first part of the cutscene is working well. Alright, so now we need a way to determine when the tween is finished. So, what we'll do is tween.completed wait. So, now this is going to wait until the tween is actually done. And we can say done with tween. And that is a signal that tells us to begin the next cutscene. So it's going to go from that position to that position. Now we're going to wait and it's going to say completed. Okay, so done with tween. Now we can start off a new tween. So now to do that, we're going to have to um, make it a while loop. 
or we can make it a for loop. For i equals one tween array. Whoops. Tween array. Now this is gonna loop through the C frame array. And we can just change things around here. So now this is gonna do the tween, play it, wait until it's done, and it's gonna do it for i equals two. So i is a variable that's gonna start at one. It's gonna end at the number of things in our array. So it's gonna be from one to two. So the first time this runs, i will be equal to one. So all this will run, i will be equal to one, and then the next time it runs, i will be equal to two. And that's gonna stop. So that's how a for loop works. And if you're interested, I'll make a separate video on just for loops. So we have our for loop, we have our tweening, now we need to change this index because we don't want it to reference the second one every single time. We want to go i. Instead of from i to the number of objects in the array, we can go from 2 to the number of objects in the array. So we're going to need to do that whole C frame thing again, that whole camera thing. Workspace.current.camera.c frame. So now where's the third position that you want the camera in between to? Well, let's say you want it right here. So print that. What about the fourth position? Here, print that. Fifth position, maybe you want an aerial view. So print that. So now we have three more positions. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did in the beginning of the video. Comma, cframe.new, paste it. Comma, copy, cframe.new, paste it. Comma. And we do it one more time. All right, so now we've got this. So it's gonna go from two all the way to five because there's five C frames in this array. One, two, three, four, five. So two to five. So let's see if this works. So we've got our first tween, so it goes there. Now will the second one work? Awesome, awesome, we got it. Now the second tween works, see if the next one works. It'll go back to another position. I think the last one was the aerial view, so it should go up. As you can see, it's happening in a smooth, smooth fashion. So that's how you can make a cutscene. All right, so that's cool and all, but how do I make it fade? Which is that, that large black frame sort of goes invisible and visible. So you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna add a screen GUI, a frame, go to background color, make it black. Set the size to 1010. Zero, one, zero that'll fill up the whole screen. What we're doing here, this is the fader. So what we're gonna be doing is setting the background transparency from zero all the way to one, and then back to zero. And then change the camera, and go back to one, then zero. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna be using tween service. So go one, and we can put this right here. So now what we can do is look at fader equals script.parent. Now this fader object is that frame, which is the parent of the script. So now we need to make a new tween. So we're gonna go, we're gonna make the first tween, which is going to, um, we're gonna make the fader go from completely black to transparent like that. So let's start with zero, change some things here. Instead of the camera, now we're focused on the fader. Instead of the C frame, now we want the tween the background transparency. So background transparency, equals one. Now this is going to smoothly make it go from zero to one. I think that's pretty good. Local. We get our new variable. Okay, that's good. We'll set this to like two. Now the fader tween should also work. Okay, it doesn't. Oh, we forgot to play it. Fader tween play. All right, so now, hopefully this will work. Okay, see, slowly fade it out. Now at this point, we wanna slowly fade it back to black. So now we need to do that. There's several ways to do this, but what I'm gonna do is, and then we add the next fader to it. So now this will go to zero, and probably move this back into here. Okay, so now we're fading. Then right before it ends, it should go back to black. And no, it doesn't. Okay, well, forgot to play it again. <laughs> All right, so now hopefully this will work. So it's going, fading, then it should go back. 
Okay, perfect. And then, whoo, we got it. We got the whole fader stuff working. Awesome. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below if you want another tutorial on something different. I'm happy to make these. Thank you for watching.